How Mahatma Gandhi was killed, 20 mysteries and curiosities of Gandhi's tragic end. Mahatma Gandhi, a name synonymous with peace, nonviolence, and the struggle for Indian independence. Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated by th three bullets on January 30, 1948, and his figure continued to grow as a champion of nonviolence and as a symbol of peaceful resistance. His death came about as a result of the radicalization of Hindu nationalist elements who claimed that his calls for non-violence were only heeded by the ethnic population and ignored by the Muslims. Today in India there is a movement for the political rehabilitation of Gandhi's assassin Nathuram Gadsa, who is seen as a patriot by the sector that promotes hegemonic Hinduism. What were Gandhi's last days and hours like? Who was Nathuram Gadsi, the material author of his death? Who was the young American who caught the perpetrator of the crime? What steps are being taken in India to rehabilitate Gandhi's assassin? His dream was to see a united India, where Hindus and Muslims lived side by side in harmony, eschewing the path of violence. Even in the face of mounting hostility and deep-seated communal tension, Gandhi remained steadfast in his conviction, championing the cause of Hindu-Muslim unity with unwavering determination. In his quest to dampen the flames of discord, Gandhi embarked on several fasts, using his own health as a bargaining chip to bring about peace. These fasts were not merely symbolic gestures, but powerful tools of non-violent resistance that underscored his commitment to his cause. Through his actions, Gandhi sought to instill in the hearts of his followers a deep-seated respect for all life, irrespective of religion or creed. But despite his tireless efforts and unwavering commitment to peace, the undercurrents of disquiet continued to simmer. Gandhi's calls for unity were met with increasing resistance from radical factions that felt threatened by his vision of a united India. Their discontentment, fueled by the belief that Gandhi's appeals for peace and unity were solely directed towards the ethnic population, while ignoring the plight of the Hindus, would ultimately lead to his untimely demise. Despite his efforts to foster peace, Gandhi's life was tragically cut short on January 30, 1948. This marked the end of an era, a dire blow to the cause of peace and unity, and a stark reminder that the path to harmony is often fraught with peril. Let's know in this video the dramatic death of Mahatma Gandhi, its origins and aftermath. January 30, 1948, a day that will forever be etched in the annals of history. But what happened on that fateful day? On this chilly winter day, Mahatma Gandhi, the beacon of peace and non-violence, was in New Delhi. The day was not unlike many others, with Gandhi's routine filled with prayer meetings and discussions about the nation's future. But this day was destined to be different. As the sun began to set, Gandhi made his way to a prayer meeting at Birla House. Accompanied by his grandnieces, he began his walk through the manicured gardens towards the congregation waiting to hear him speak. But among the crowd, a man named Nathuram Gadsi was lurking. A man whose ideology was far removed from Gandhi's message of peace and unity. Gads, a staunch Hindu nationalist, had been nursing a grudge against Gandhi. He believed that Gandhi's policies were overly accommodating towards the Muslims, compromising the rights of Hindus in the process. And so, with a twisted sense of justice, Gadsi decided to put an end to what he perceived as Gandhi's betrayal. As Gandhi climbed the steps leading to the prayer dais, Gadsi stepped forward. He bowed as if to show respect, but his intentions were far from honorable. In his hands he held a Beretta semi-automatic pistol. With a swift motion, he raised his arm and fired three shots into Gandhi's frail body. The crowd gasped in horror as Gandhi collapsed. The echoes of the gunshots were quickly replaced by the cries of shock and disbelief. But amidst the pandemonium, Gandhi's last words could be heard a quiet yet poignant utterance. Hey Ram, he murmured, invoking the name of Lord Rama, a final prayer for peace in a moment of violence. In the chaos that ensued, Gandhi's last words echoed in the air, Hey Ram. The world had lost a great leader, a champion of peace and non-violence, and the Indian subcontinent had lost its Mahatma, its great soul. Who was Nathuram Gadsa, the man behind Gandhi's assassination? Nathuram Gads, born into a Brahmin family in Pune, was an editor of a Marathi newspaper and a member of the Hindu Mahasabha, a right-wing Hindu nationalist organization. 
His early life was marked by a deep-rooted reverence for the Hindu religion and culture, which he believed was under threat from other religious communities. This belief was further fortified by his association with the Hindu Mahasabha, an organization that propagated Hindu unity and dominance. Godsey's affiliation to the Hindu Mahasabha and his belief in Hindu supremacy played a pivotal role in shaping his motivations for assassinating Mahatma Gandhi. He held Gandhi responsible for the partition of India and the subsequent communal violence. He believed that Gandhi's policies were excessively accommodating towards Muslims, which according to God's, compromised the rights and interests of Hindus. The fateful day of January 30, 1948, saw these motivations culminate into a tragic action. Godsey, along with his accomplice Narayan Apte and six others, meticulously planned and executed the assassination of Gandhi. He approached Gandhi during the evening prayer meeting at Birla House and fired three bullets into his frail body. The assassination led to an immediate uproar, both in India and around the world. Godsey and his accomplices were swiftly arrested and put on trial. During the trial, Godsey showed no remorse for his actions. He defended his act, stating that he had no personal enmity towards Gandhi, but his assassination was a response to the harm he believed Gandhi's policies were causing to Hindus. The trial ended with Godsey and Apte being sentenced to death, while their accomplices received varying sentences. Godse and Apte were hanged on November 15, 1949. The execution of Godse marked the end of a chapter, but it couldn't erase the deep scars his actions had left on the Indian psyche. Godse and his accomplices were tried and executed, but the scars they left behind remained. Herbert Reiner Jr., a young American diplomat, found himself at the center of one of history's darkest moments. In the midst of the chaos that followed the fatal shots, it was Reiner who had the presence of mind to apprehend the assassin. It was a moment where fate and circumstance collided, placing him in the eye of a historical storm. Reiner was there at Birla House on that fateful day, a mere spectator to what he thought would be a peaceful prayer meeting. He had no inkling of the tragedy that was about to unfold. As Gandhi made his way through the crowd, Reiner saw a man break from the throng. This man was Natharam Godsey, who would soon become known to the world as Gandhi's assassin. As Godsey approached Gandhi, Reiner noticed something was off. But before he could fully comprehend the situation, Godsey had fired the fatal shots. Amid the shock and panic, Reiner sprang into action. He seized Godsey by the arm and held him until the police arrived, ensuring the assassin could not escape. Later, Reiner would provide a chilling account of the assassination. He described the scene in vivid detail, from the way Godse had moved through the crowd, to the moment he fired the gun, to the sudden silence that followed the shots. He recounted the horror and disbelief on the faces of those who had been there to see it, a testament to the profound impact of Gandhi's death. But Reiner did more than just capture the assassin and recount the event. His actions and his account of the assassination served as a critical piece of evidence in the trial that followed. His testimony helped to ensure that Godsey and his accomplices were brought to justice. Reiner's experience is a stark reminder that history is not just made by the famous figures and the dramatic events, but also by the ordinary people who find themselves caught up in extraordinary circumstances. His quick thinking in the face of tragedy helped to bring a murderer to justice and provided an invaluable account of one of the most significant events of the 20th century. Reiner's account provides a chilling first-hand perspective of the tragic event. Gandhi's assassination left behind a trail of mysteries and curiosities. The first curiosity is the unheard plea. Despite Gandhi's ceaseless appeals for unity and nonviolence, his voice fell on deaf ears among the radical factions. The irony of his pleas for peace being answered with violence is a chilling reminder of the struggle he faced. Next we have the lost bullets. Three bullets ended Gandhi's life, but their whereabouts remain a mystery. Some believe they were lost in the chaos following the assassination, while others speculate they were secretly collected as morbid keepsakes. Then there's the final fast. Just days before his death, Gandhi embarked on a fast unto death vowing to abstain from food until the violence ceased. His untimely death cut this fast short, leaving us to wonder what might have been had he lived. The last photo of Gandhi, 
is another curiosity. Taken just moments before his assassination, it captures the Mahatma in a state of tranquility, oblivious to the fate that awaited him. The unsent letter is a poignant symbol of Gandhi's unfinished work. It was a letter to Nathuram Godsi, pleading for reconciliation. Tragically, it was never sent. The public mourning that followed Gandhi's death was unprecedented. Millions poured onto the streets in a display of collective grief that India had never seen before. This spontaneous outpouring of sorrow is a testament to Gandhi's profound impact on the Indian psyche. The forgotten co-conspirators in Gandhi's assassination are often overlooked. While Godsey pulled the trigger, he did not act alone. The fate of his accomplices, however, remains largely unexplored. The international reaction to Gandhi's assassination was a mix of shock and grief. World leaders expressed their condolences, and people across the globe mourned the loss of a man who had become a symbol of peace and nonviolence. Conspiracy theories abound about the events leading up to and following Gandhi's assassination. Some believe that the assassination was part of a larger plot, while others speculate about the involvement of foreign powers. These theories, while largely unsubstantiated, add a layer of intrigue to an already complex narrative. The rehabilitation debate is a contentious issue in India today. Some factions seek to portray Godsey as a patriot, arguing that his actions were justified. This narrative is fiercely contested, and the debate continues to rage. The cultural impact of Gandhi's assassination was profound. It influenced Indian literature, cinema, and arts, shaping the collective consciousness of the nation. His death and life continue to inspire countless works of art and literature. The trial of Godsey and his accomplices set legal precedents that continue to shape Indian legal history. The trial was marked by its fair and impartial proceedings, despite the highly charged atmosphere surrounding it. Across India, numerous memorials commemorate Gandhi's life and death. These places of remembrance serve as a testament to his enduring legacy and the deep respect he commands among the people of India. Finally, we come to the unending journey. Gandhi's teachings of nonviolence and peaceful resistance continue to inspire movements around the world. From the civil rights movement in America to the fight for democracy in Myanmar, Gandhi's influence is far-reaching and enduring. The tragic end of Mahatma Gandhi is a tale of mysteries and curiosities that continue to captivate us even today. Mahatma Gandhi's assassination was a pivotal moment in history that shook the world. As we delve into the mysteries and curiosities surrounding his death, we not only uncover the horrible truth, but also reaffirm the enduring legacy of his teachings.